Welcome to you all to my VLSA series of lectures. I am VR Seshigiri Rao, Associate Professor in the Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. Today, my topic is Internal Block Description of FPGA. So, after going through this class, you will be able to define what is Field Programmable Gate Array, list and explain the principle of operation of various functional units in FPGA, compare the architecture and performance specification of specifications of various commercial available FPGAs. So, these are the objectives of today's class. So, FPGA, it is a device that contains a matrix of reconfigurable gate arrays. And FPGA, as the name suggests, it is a field programmable gate array. That means, the programming is done at the customer end, not at the manufacturing end. If you take PL, PLA, PAL or uh, channel gate arrays, the customization is done in the manufacturing end. But in FPGA, the configuration is done at the customer end. That is why it is called field programmable gate array. Okay. So, this offers a flexibility. FPGAs are very useful during design and proto development stage. And unlike processors, FPGAs use dedicated hardware for processing logic and they do not require an operating system. Okay. So, uh, FPGAs have uh, can rewire their internal, circu internal circuitry to allow reconfiguration after the control system is deployed in the field. So, FPGAs deliver the performance and the reliability of the hardware circuitry. So, this is uh, the conf this is the block diagram or functional block diagram of FPGA. So, the internal resources of FPGA they consist of matrix of config configurable logic blocks. These are the configurable logic blocks in square form. Okay, and they are surrounded by a periphery of I/O blocks. Uh, these are the these are the I/O uh, blocks and uh, through which input and output signals are taken. Input signals are applied to the FPGA and output signals are taken from the FPGA. And signals are routed in the FPGA matrix by programmable interconnect switches and wire routes. These are the programmable interconnect switches. Okay. These are the programmable interconnect switches. So, this, this is the configurable logic blocks and this is the programmable, these lines are programmable interconnects and these are the I/O blocks on the, which are on the periphery of the FPGA. So, in total we have the configurable logic blocks, the programmable inter interconnects and the I/O blocks. So, in FPGA, the blocks are implemented using multi-level fan gates. So, you get a more compact design compared to the two-level and or gate structures in PLDs. PLDs, you know, we have three types of PLDs, PROM, PAL and PLA. In PROM, the AND array plane is fixed, but R array plane is programmable, you know very well. And in PAL, the anti plane is programmable, but R plane is fixed. Whereas in PLA, both the anti plane and R plane, both are programmable. Okay. And FPGA, it provides its user to configure the intersection between the logic blocks and the function of each logic block. See, when you implement a Boolean function, you may have to implement a variety of functions such as exclusive or NAND, NOR, or exclusive NOR. So, 
the logic block of the FPGA can be configured, and uh, you can using FPGA you can implement much much more complex functions of any number of variables. Suppose you take a two input NAND gate, your NAND gate can have only two variables, four input NAND gate, four variables, or in FPGA, you can implement a Boolean function consisting of what? 10 variables or 100 variables also. But how it is possible? By interconnecting the logic blocks. So the logic block of FPGA can be configured a small Boolean function and it, its output can go to another logic block and there you can get some more um, some more variables with her boolean function so this can be used to implement a different combinations of combinational and sequential logic circuits circuits so using fpga you can implement combinational logic as well as the sequential logic And routing in FPGA, it consists of wiring segments of various lengths, varying lengths, and that can be connected electrically using programmable switches. So, FPGA, it consists of logic blocks and the interconnects. And if interconnects are more, logic elements will become less. And if logic elements are more, interconnects will become less. So, you, you need to go for optimization and number of segments used for interconnection is typically a trade-off between the density of logic blocks used and the amount of area used for routing okay so this is a simplified version of uh, fpga which is shown here and this is the clb configurable logic block and these are the io blocks and these are the routing part this is the routing part are the programmable interconnects. Okay, so routing it consists. Uh, if you have more number of routing, then then uh, space available for the CLBs become less, and if more CLBs are there, routing becomes less. So you need to go for a optimization, and it is a trade-off between the density of logic blocks and the amount of area used for the routing. So why do we need FPGAs? So the, the because the system typically consists of a few large scale integrated components and MSA and SSA. And initial attempt to, was to solve this problem. Uh, it has led to the development of customizers to replace the large amount of interconnectors. So when you go for customizers, the Programming is done at the manufacturing end, and uh, when customer is doing experimentation, he cannot uh, do it because the reprogrammability feature was not there. So to have this in FPGAs, the reprogrammability feature is introduced so that customer can do his product development by going through the required iterations. So this has uh, reduced the system complexity and manufacturing cost and the performance. So custom ICs have their own disadvantages because they are very expensive to develop and the delay introduced for product to market because of increased design time. So because, of, because the custom ICs have all these disadvantages, uh, there was a necessity to go for FPGAs. And there are two kinds of uh, costs that are in, involved in the development of custom ICs. One is the cost of development and design and the cost of manufacture. Okay. And a trade-off exists between the two elements. So custom IC approach was viable only for products with very high volume and uh, which were not time to market sensitive okay uh, if you don't have time constraint then you go for custom ic approach but 
But when you have constant of time, when time to market is very important, then you have to go for FPGA. So FPGAs were introduced as an alternative to the customizes for implementing entire system on one chip and to provide a flexibility of the reprogram flexibility of reprogramming at the user end or in the field. Now let us go to the FPGA classification on user programmable switching technologies. So FPGAs are based on the logic elements and the interconnects to, to connect these logic elements and in gate arrays these were connected by a mask during design, during manufacture. But in FPGAs this uh, wiring is done at the customer end or in the field. So there are three types of uh, devices which are used for interconnecting the CLBs or doing the programming. So one is the pass transistors controlled by a SRAM switch. So this is one approach, pass transistors controlled by a SRAM cell. Next is a flash or EE prom cell that means electrically erasable programmable read only memory to pass the signal or direct connect using anti fuses. So, these are the three approaches. So, the first approach is pass transistors controlled by a SRAM cell. The second approach is a flash or EE prom cell. The third is direct connecting using anti fuses. Now, let us go to the FPGA classification on user programming technology. So, just now as I have mentioned, so one is anti-fuse programmed FPGAs, the next is SRAM programmed FPGAs, next is EE programmed FPGAs. And anti-fuse, uh, different manufacturers, uh, they use different uh, technologies. For example, Actel uses anti-fuse technology and Xilinx it uses SRAM programmed technology and uh, Toshiba also uses SRAM programmed technologies. Altera uses electrically erasable PROM technologies. So different manufacturers use different types of uh, techniques for programming the FPGA. Now let us see the SRAM based um, FPGAs. So what is the major advantage? The major advantage of SRAM based device is that uh, you can program it any number of times and their function is changed quickly by merely changing the contents of the PROM. So in SRAM, the programming data is outside the FPGA and when you switch on the FPGA, the programming data is taken from the SPROM into the FPGA and configuration, reconfigure configuration is done. And when you are doing product development and uh, you cannot do the product development in one go, so you have to undergo many iterations. So there is a requirement of changing the program again and again. So what you have to do, you have to simply change the contents of SPROM which is outside the FPGA. And when you power on the system, the program from FP uh, program from SPROM gets loaded into FPGA and FPGA gets configured to implement the required VN function. Okay. So and you can do this any number of times. So that is an important uh, point. So they are infinitely reprogrammable. You see, please underline this point. So they can also be changed not only at the user end, but the program can also be changed at the in the field also the, for uploading new application code. So it does, however, come with a price that the interconnect element has more area than other technologies. Because the SRAM is inside FPGA, 
so it requires more area you know what is a sram sram is two inverters connected back to back right so this is a this is one inverter this is another inverter and you have a pass gate here and there is another pass gate here okay so this inverter requires uh, two mosfets this inverter requires two mosfets this is two pass gates so sram requires how many transistors it requires six transistors each sram cell it requires three trans six transistors that is why it is called as 60 sram cell so the advantage is you can have any number of iterations infinite number of iterations at the cost of large area overhead okay so the wires are very expensive and slow next is the fpga architect is therefore forced to make an inefficient logic modules and the other uh, like a lookup table or lut mostly the fpgas uh, which are sram based they use lookup tables in the logic elements or in the configuration logic blocks so they are slightly inefficient and other the other disadvantage is that they need to be programmed each time when power is applied so when you switch off the power the boolean function is vanished so if you need again when you power on the program gets loaded into fpga and fpga gets configured so every time when you remove the power the fpga gets re uh, fpga gets reset so every time the fpgas need to be reprogrammed but of course uh, the program is kept in sprom which is outside fpga and when you power on the program the or the bit stream flows from sprom into the fpga and fpga gets uh, configured to implement the complex boolean function but this needs some time now you see here this is sram controlled programmable switches diagram so this is the logic cell what you see here there are four logic cells 1 2 3 4 and these are the interconnects and suppose the output of uh, this uh, logic cell i want to you have to connect it to uh, you you have to connect it here then what you have to do you have to this is the crossbar switch and this is sram so this sram gives uh, when this sram when it is uh, activated this mosfet is turned on and you get a connection from you get a connection from this point to this point so this uh, the output of this logic cell is connected to this io pin and similarly you have to activate this sram cell also and similarly you have to activate this sram cell also so when sram bit is uh, made one then this mosfet is turned on and it establishes connection between the required horizontal and vertical lines so this is sram controlled programmable switch now let us go to the anti fuse based fpga okay so the anti fuse based fpga it has the highest density interconnector by being a true cross point so the designer has uh, a large number of fitter connects so logic modules can be smaller and more efficient and place and route software also has uh, flexible time but uh, the disadvantage with the anti fuse based fpgas is they are only one time programmable if you take the case of sram based fpgas just now we have discussed they can be programmed infinite number of times but anti fuse based fpgas they can be programmed only one time and as an example actel's uh, anti fuse structure it is uh, shown here you see here this is uh, one metal block and this is one metal layer and here you have a dielectric this is a dielectric right this is what you are seeing is a 
dielectric. So when you apply high voltage to the dielectric, it gets ruptured and it, it establishes a contact between these two things, these two metal top and bottom metal layers. So you get a connection. So you get a connection between this wire and this wire when you apply high voltage. And uh, the advantage is uh, you can have very high density of uh, antifuses unlike SRAM which requires uh, 6 transistors. But here you can have high density. So the designer has a la large number of interconnects uh, and also the logic modules can be smaller and place and root software also is simple. But the main disadvantage is antifuse based FPGAs are only one time programmable. And Actel uses antifuse based FPGAs. Next, let us come to EE prom based FPGAs. So, this EE prom FPGAs they use they can be used in two ways as a control device as an SRAM cell or also as a directly programmable switch. So when used as a switch they can be very efficient as interconnect and can be reprogrammable at any at the same time. They are also non-volatile. So when you use uh, e prom based interconnects they are non-volatile. So even if power is removed the program stays and you can have the boolean function readily available during whenever you switch on the uh, whenever you switch on the FPGA. So in E prom based FPGAs we use floating gate MOSFETs. What is a floating gate MOSFET? See normal MOSFET is like this and it has a small amount of threshold voltage. Suppose you take N MOSFET you have the uh, you have a positive threshold voltage and uh, when uh, to make the MOSFET on you have to apply a small voltage which is greater than the threshold voltage. In E from based FPGAs floating gate MOSFETs are used. In floor, what is a floating gate MOSFET technology? You have uh, so this is a floating gate MOSFET technology you have another you have a floating gate between the actual gate and and the channel. So this is a floating gate. So during programming, a high uh, a high voltage is applied. When high voltage is applied, some of the electrons from the substrate they reach the floating gate and they stay there. So what happens when when you apply high voltage and when the electrons accumulate at the floating gate, the basic physical pro property and electrical property of the MOSFET is changed and the threshold voltage becomes very, very large. The threshold voltage becomes very, very large. So for basic operating conditions, the MOSFET always remains in off state. So that means when you program the MOSFET, the floating gate MOSFET, it remains in off state for normal operating conditions. So, and when you have to make it normal, what you have to do? You have to apply a sufficient negative voltage at its gate so that whatever electrons which have got accumulated on the floating gate, they are thrown back to the substrate and then it behaves normally. And when you use such a technology, you can reprogram it any number of times. So, e and another advantage is uh, in SRAM based FPGAs which are manufactured by Xilinx, I told you that uh, we use SRAM, SPROM outside the FPGA. That means uh, the program is outside the FPGA and every time when you switch on, the program gets loaded into FPGA. But in e prom the program resides within the FPGA because you are using a non-volatile memory, electrically erasable programmable read-only memory. So the E electrical erasable programmable read-only memory process is uh, complicated. So, but uh, 
the main advantage is the program is within the FPGA. The program need not come from outside the FPGA. Now let us see this uh, actual logic block. Okay. So if inputs, it, it is based on the multiplexer logic and if inputs to the multiplexer are connected to a constant or a signal, it can be used to increment a different billion functions. For example, in a two input multiplexer with inputs A and B, select will implement the function AC plus BC for. So if B is equal to 0, it will implement AC and if A is equal to 0, it implement BC bar. So, this is this sort of um, a logic implementation is done in actual logic block. Now, Xilinx logic block, just uh, we have discussed that Xilinx logic block, it is SRAM based and uh, it is uh, based on lookup table technology. So, lookup table is used to implement any number of different functionality and the input lines go into the input enabling of input lookup table and the output of the lookup table gives the result of the logic function that implements and lookup table is implemented using SRAM. So as you see here this is the lookup table and these are the inputs and these are the multiplexers and uh, you have select lines and depending upon the select lines and the contents of lookup table, the boolean function is implemented and the boolean function can go directly to the output or it can go through flip-flop also. So this is a flip-flop. So because we are having flip-flop, you can implement sequential functions also using FPGA. We will take one example also, uh, I will show you the implementation of some boolean functions using lookup table now. Now suppose <coughs> this is a lookup table, let us say the contents of this lookup table is 0. 1, 1, 0. Okay. Now I have two multiplexers here and this is another multiplexer. And this 0 and 1 are connected to this MUX and this 1 and 0 are connected to this multiplexer. And I am having another multiplexer here. and the output is coming from here and the output of this MUX is connected here, the output of this MUX is connected here and there are two select lines, say this is X1 and this is connected to this MUX and as well as this is connected, X1 is connected to this MUX also. And I have another select line x2 x2 and this is the function f. Okay. Now let us say x1 is 0 and x2 is 0. Then what happens? See when x1 is 0 and x2 is 0, uh, the output of this box is going to be one here and the output of this MUX is going to be 0 and when x2 is 0, it selects the top one so I get the output as 0. Now let us say Now let us say x1 is 0 and x2 is 1. Then what happens? Here I get 1, here I get 0 and because x2 is 1, I get the output here as 1. So f is going to be 1. Similarly, I give 1, 0. Then what happens?
when x1 is 1, the output, here I get 0 and here I get 1 and when x2 is 0, so this is selected and I get the output as 1. I get the output as 1. And when both are 1, 1, okay, when both are 1, 1, So here I get 0, here I get 1 and uh, here I get 0. So what is the function f is equal to what? f is equal to x1 bar x2 plus x1 x2 bar. So this is uh, this is the configuration logic element. Now I want to implement another boolean function. What I have to do? I have to simply change the contents of lookup table. Suppose I make the contents of lookup table like this. Instead of 0, 1, 1, 0, I make the contents of lookup table as 1, 0, 0, 1. Let us say. Okay. Then what happens? Uh, then, then also you have this mux like this. Then this is another mux. And this is F. And this is X1. Which is connected here as well as connected here and this is x2 which is connected to the second level mux. Now in this case I get the function like this x1 x2 and x2 is 1 and f. So here I get the function like this when both are 0, 0, I get 1, then 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. So what is the function here? f is equal to <coughs> x1 bar, x2 bar plus x1, x2. So by simply changing the contents of uh, the lookup table, you can increment various building functions. And this lookup table is a part of the CLB. And you have many number of CLBs like that and the output from one CLB can be connected to another CLB and let us say this CLB is having x1, x2 and this CLB is having x3, x4 and these two outputs can be combined using interconnect matrix by appropriate programming and I can generate a boolean function of four variables x1, x2, x3, x4. So like that we can implement different boolean functions and this is used in Xilinx FPGA which is SRAM based. We have discussed that uh, there are three different technologies. Xilinx uses SRAM based FPGAs and Actel uses anti-fuse based FPGAs and uh, anti-fuse based FPGAs are only one time programmable and the Other manufacturer uses uh, Altera uses electrically erasable programmable read only memory. Yeah. Okay. Now I am going to discuss the implementation of 422 encoder using programmable read only memory. Let us see how you can design 422 encoder. using PROM. What is a PROM? PROM has a fixed end plane and it has programmable or plane. What is a 4 into 2 encoder? Suppose I give 0, 0, 0, 1. Uh, there are four possible com input combinations 0, 0, 0, 1 and 0, 0, 1, 0. 
zero one zero zero and zero. Sorry, one zero zero zero. Now let us say I encode this as zero zero, and this one I encode as zero one. Let us say this one I encode as one zero and this one I encode as one one. So how do you design this using prom? Yeah. Now prom I use a four to sixteen decoder. Four to sixteen. It has four inputs: D3 and D2, D1, D0, and uh, you have 16 outputs ranging from 0 to 15. So zero I have, then one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, then fifteen. Okay, so this zero zero one it corresponds to what number? Two decimal, and zero zero sorry it corresponds to one decimal, and this corresponds to two, and this corresponds to four, and this corresponds to eight. So I have uh, lines coming from here, 2, 4, 8, like this, there are so many, and this is, this is 0, 2, 4, 8, but I have other lines also, okay. and this encoder has how many bits, it has 2 bits. So I, uh, you need two OR gates. So you have to select a PROM with two OR gates. So this is one OR gate and this is one OR gate. And one OR gate will give me A1 and another OR gate will give me A0. So this is uh, A1. And this is A naught. So A naught uh, is A naught is enabled for two and eight. So two is connected here, and eight also is connected here. This is two and eight. So that will give me A naught bit. And A one, A one is coming is given by four and eight. So four, and this is eight. So this will give me A1, this will give me A0. All other outputs are also connected to this uh, R gates, but in open form, with open contact. Only the 4 and 8 are connected to this R gate and 2, eight, two and 8 are connected to this uh, R gate. So that will give me A1 and A0 bit. So that is how we can realize the 4 to encoder using So with this, I conclude today's session on FPGA. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.